Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Happy Hump Day. This day, October 14th, 2020. If you'd like to unmute your microphone, say hello. Hi. Good morning. Hello, DJ. Good morning. Hope everyone is doing well. Getting uh, ready to complete the eighth week of class. We're almost halfway through the semester. Semester is 16 weeks, and we're just about to finish week eight. So we are almost over the hump for the semester. Over the hump. Almost over the hump over this semester. Today is hump day for this week, week eight. Got uh, several things I want to do today. And the first. Teacher. Yes, go ahead. Teacher, um, we are going to do a podcast of this week, even if we um, do the video about the cooking thing. Yes, we're going to continue doing your uh, podcast. Okay, and it can be, of course, the subject Whatever is of interest to you, uh, you can choose whatever you would like. I am going to extend the due date for the um, for the video. So I want to give everyone until uh, sa Saturday if you need it. All right. I'm going to give uh, you guys, you'll have time today to work on your video in class. And I'm going to give everyone um, about half a class on Friday, because uh, the first part of Friday, we're going to have another speaking activity like we did last Friday, right? So after the speaking activity on Friday, I'll give you class time also to complete your video. Today, I want to talk specifically about how to organize your video. I want to give you some suggestions, and I want to talk about... Uh, an outline, doing an outline for your, your video. And we're going to look at a couple of examples today in class uh, to hopefully help you get some ideas about how you can create your own video. But I would ask everyone to try not to create your video until Friday or if you need Saturday to complete the video, I'll extend the due date uh, to give you uh, more time. Uh, to do that, okay? So um, the the podcast will continue this week. Again, four to four and a half minutes. Try to include an intro, the body, and also a conclusion. Try not to read any text. Try to make it as conversational as possible, right? But we'll continue both of those, uh, both of these, both of these assignments for this week. Yeah, bueno, are you start to record this class? It's because um some some classmates are uh -huh. right now in cursos de regularización. De hecho, estoy en dos llamadas al mismo tiempo ahorita. Ah. Este, esto ya lo está grabando para verlo al rato. Ah, okay. Wh okay, so when do you have your <clears throat> when do you have your class with uh, Dr. Luis? Humberto. Um, tenemos los cursos de, de 7 a 8, solo que creo que está comando los últimos datos, solo que todavía no termina. Ah, ok. Ah, ok. No, I didn't, uh, I didn't know that. Ok. Thank you, thank you for letting me no, know. No, no. Um, um, but yes, I am recording the class. Ok, so, okay. so, um, and this is why I do that. If for some reason you guys are not able to watch or be in the class, the entire class, um, you should be able to check out the recording. I'm double checking here. It looks like everything is being recorded. Okay. So that shouldn't be a problem. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. All right. So I'm going to share my screen, guys, and I want to share with you from last week, last Friday, we had our first speaking activity where you were asked to answer a question for one minute. We're going to do exactly the same thing this Friday, except it'll be a different question. I'm going to ask you to answer the question, and you'll have one minute to complete your response. It's really important 
to try to speak between 50 seconds, between 50 to 60 seconds, okay? So you want to really try to use up as much of your one minute as possible. And I want to give you an example. Hopefully you can see my screen. I have a list of all of your names. I think this is the order in which you presented. And let me see if I can... Can you guys see the, the numbers clearly enough? Yes. Okay. All right. So what I want to show you here is a score. Now, how did I figure the score? This, uh, this is a score from 0 to 10. Okay. So 10 is a perfect score, right? And so how did I figure this score? So I'm going to unhide my columns here. So remember from the rubric, the speaking rubric, it was divided into three areas, delivery, language use, and, and topic development. Now for this example, okay, for this example, notice that the topic development I'm taking pretty much from how long you spoke during your response. And so... Basically, this score in the topic development is coming from how many seconds you spoke. So, for example, uh, Jez spoke for 56 seconds, Paulina, 30 seconds, and so on. Okay, so this column H is, uh, has the time, the duration of your response. So here, if you spoke less than one minute, right, then this is calculated here as your topic development. Now, for this example, I'm, I'm showing you guys as if everyone received full credit for the delivery and language use. Now, this is just for as an example, okay? So, I want you to see the effect on your total grade if you don't speak for the full minute. That's the purpose of showing you this. All right, I'm going to hide these again. I'm going to hide these columns just to make it a little bit easier. So here you have your name and then your total score. All right, all the way down. Let me scroll down a little bit for those who spoke later. All right, so hopefully everyone can see what your total score was. If you want to write this down or note this someplace. Right, and this is how long you spoke in this column H. All right, so as you're practicing, and we did a self evaluation, and I hope through that self evaluation, it um, allowed you to reflect a little bit on how you take notes or how you took notes the first time, and whether or not you should continue to take notes for the next response. I would suggest that everyone take notes in some way, right, to help better prepare and provide a better response. If, if you only spoke for 30 seconds, right, or you spoke less than one minute, I would say, then I would carefully evaluate how you took notes, whether you took notes and, and how you took notes. Because the whole idea of taking notes is to help prepare you to speak long enough and also it should allow you to help speak in a more organized fashion, right? So use your notes to not only talk about what you want to say, but also how you want to say it, how you want to present it. What do you want to talk about first? What do you want to talk about second? What do you want to talk about third? All right, and if you're ever given an example of, okay, what's best, this or this, and then explain why. When you hear and explain why, right away, your whole response should be about the why, about the reasons, and you need to think and maybe take notes for you, to yourself about, okay, I'm going to talk about three reasons. This is the first reason, this is the second reason, and this is the third reason. 
So you write those down. And then if time permits, then next to each of those three reasons, you write out a couple of key words, two or three key words to say, okay, this first reason, I'm going to talk about a couple of things, right? Or maybe some examples, or maybe it's a, a personal experience. You can just write down, you know, beach, right? If you think about an experience you had about at the beach that relates to that reason. And so really pay close attention to how you can take notes to, again, better uh, provide a better response to the question. And ideally, we want to use up as much of that one minute as possible. You'll notice that during the first speaking activity, right, when you finished speaking, I paused, I waited until one minute uh, came up, right, until one minute uh, had transpired. And... So I wanted you to be aware of the amount of time that you still had in some of your cases where you could have, uh, you could have spoken longer, right? And I'll do the same again for our second activity for this Friday. All right, so uh, this is to give you an idea about your score. And again, this example that I'm sharing with you is not taking into consideration your language use or your delivery. Your delivery has a lot to do with how you organize your ideas. What comes first? What comes second? Language use, primarily. The grammar that you use, your vocabulary. Are you using advanced vocabulary or very, very basic vocabulary and so on? All right. So this, uh, hopefully this will help you. Uh, we'll have another speaking activity this Friday at 8 o'clock. Again, I recommend everyone to arrive a few minutes early. Try to arrive to the class a few minutes early so that you get settled in and you're ready to go. Because I want to begin right at 8 so that we can conclude the speaking activity and give you as much time as possible to continue working on your second performance task, your performance task for unit two. Alrighty. So, what I'd like to do now is to share with you a couple of videos I found. We need to start thinking about our cooking show and today's focus has everything to do with organization. How do you want to organize now as a team? Not individually, necessarily, but as a team. How do you want to present your cooking show? What should come first? What should come second? And so on. So I'm going to open up here a video. I want to take a look at two videos I found. This first one is about three minutes, a little less than three minutes long. Not because I think this video is exactly what you should do, all right? The videos that I'm sharing with you, I want to get some ideas about things that you could include in your own video. But again, these examples are not uh, like, okay, you should do exactly like what they're doing, okay? In this first example, in fact, there is a lot of Spanish spoken, and I don't object to certain words or key words if they are part of the culture, part of your discussion, and they happen to be uh, f uh, foreign words. Certainly, you can use that. The you can use the foreign word, but most of your discussion, of course, needs to be in English in your video. Let's take a look at this example and see what we can get, what kind of ideas, and how are they approaching their own video for this particular purpose. All right, let's take a look. All right, so right away, right from the very beginning, what are they trying to do? What are they doing here at the beginning of this video, even before we watch the rest of it, before they speak? Uh, the way they cook, or the way the that woman cooked. Right, the way that they cook. So one of the takeaways, one of the examples right away, we're, what, two, three seconds into the video. One of the things that you guys can do for your own video 
is to show how, how you're doing your recipe. All right. You don't necessarily have to do a very traditional type of cooking show where you say, okay, these are the ingredients. Okay. Add the milk to this, do that, and then pour here and then stick it in the oven. Right. You don't have to do it exactly like that. All right. You can talk about rest, a recipe, a dish, how to prepare it without being uh, providing that level of detail. What we're looking at here in this video, this is called a B roll. It's a B roll because we're looking at a video. Later, we'll see, um, we'll hear someone speak in the background. At any time that you're showing a video or showing a, a moving image, like a video, and you're speaking in the background, you're using what's called a B-roll. And this can be very effective, right, throughout your presentation. And in your own case, if you're recording an online class in Microsoft Teams, this is where someone can share their screen and speak while they're sharing the screen, their, uh, their screen. Okay, and when you share your screen, it can be just about anything. It can be, you know, a video with no audio, and you're just showing that clip while you speak, right? Um, you know, there are various ways that you can that you can do that. So one way that they're showing right off the bat is how they're preparing food. What else do you see? What else are they doing in this these first few seconds other than showing how to prepare food? Uh, it also includes if uh, if that person is cooking at uh, on the stove or in other um, she, she's using other parts of of, uh, of it to cook. Right. So we we notice that she's it's not only just her actions about how she's preparing certain foods, but also in this case it looks like a. Uh, a kitchen, or at least a place that uh, we don't recognize as a kitchen these days, right? There are traditional artifacts in this in this video, right? We've got looks like a stone, some stone structures here, and some uh, looks like some baskets over here. What else do you see other than here some artifacts, some traditional? artifacts that are part of the culture other than the way she's preparing the food and these structures here in the video. Anything else? Uh, maybe the music uh, back, uh, backwards. Mm -hmm. back yeah, the backwards. background music, of course, right? The background music, setting up, beginning the video with some background music. These are all good techniques that you can also include in your video. Anything else that you see? Like the way she moved the tools. Okay, the way that she is moving, uh, moving the tools. All right. So here at the beginning. All right. What else? What else do you see here? There's one other aspect that we haven't talked about. What else do you notice here? Other than the artifacts um. here. Maybe um, the clothes. Yeah. I don't know if it's important. Yeah, well, I think so. Look, all of this is part of the culture. Right off the bat, we see it has something to do with food. It has something to do with uh, the time, right? For me, this says something like, well, this is maybe how food was prepared a long time ago. And perhaps the clothes that she's wearing is representative of, of the culture that goes beyond, behind making the food. All of this is accomplished in just a few seconds in this video. And this is what I want you guys to c keep in mind when you create your own video. Do you have to do something exactly like this? Of course not. No. But notice that they're doing a lot of things in the first few seconds without any words, without any mention of of what the purpose of this video is right now ignore the fact that we know we have a title for for this video right but the video itself the moving images here 
are really introducing very quickly what this video is all about. Now, she's speaking in Spanish, but I want you to pay close attention to what she's saying. Because, of course, this is an approach that you can also include. She's setting up the purpose of this video, what this video is all about, about different ways of cooking. All right, so notice a couple of things here. She is, we're looking at how she is preparing food and we're listening to her speak. So in your case, as uh, in your own teams, there are different ways that you can do this. Of course, this is a video, it's a B-roll, but you could also show in your video you preparing food or doing something and speaking about either cultural relevance of the food, uh, some sort of historical perspective. You could talk about that, but you're doing something. It's not just you looking at the camera and speaking, right? So if you can either yourself do something and speak at the same time or show a video, a video that you create that you're speaking in the background, that's fine. So what I'm saying here in this, exa uh, in this example is you would actually have a video within a video. Now the video that you have that you're showing probably will not have any audio. It should not have any audio because you want to create your own video with you speaking conversationally, right? And so, you know, think about these are all options that you have as, as your team makes decisions about how you want to create your video. Now notice that was, that was kind of an introduction, right? How long was that introduction? About 30 seconds. Right, so it's it might be a good idea to try to create an, an introduction anywhere from 15 to 30 seconds, much like what she's done here or what they've done. I'm not sure who produced this. They also included a title here, which was nice. All right, so she notice here she's talking, she's explaining the context, not just the food at this point. It's a lot of context, right? And this is where, in your case, you could also bring in a discussion of a famous person talking about some link between this person, this famous person, or a style, and, and food. How does it link? And uh, how can you link it as uh, between your team members? They're kind of telling a story, right? It's very much like a story. So think about how you can either tell a personal story or a story about a person if you want to focus the story on the famous person or if you want to focus the story on a historical uh, cultural aspect, right? That's another way of kind of telling a story. So she's telling a story and she's showing... Right? They're showing video and images of what they're, they're talking about. Right? Right, so she's, she's talking about, notice here that they're talking about how she's preparing it. They're not showing the details, actually the recipe, right? But you could, right? I, you, you need to decide how much in detail do you want to talk about the recipe itself versus how to prepare it. And then also the cultural significance, maybe talk about identity or how one associates their personal history with the food, whether it's your own history or, again, of the person that you're talking about. Now, I'm assuming here, if we're talking about your own personal stories, if you're choosing to talk about something related to a Mexican dish. Now, you don't have to talk about a Mexican dish. You can talk about anything that you want, any type of dish that you want. Um, but the story can either be your own or it could be a story telling, uh, revealing something about the famous person that you chose, the celebrity, or a fashion uh, statement that relates to the, uh, the dish. 
All right, now, now they're getting into a little bit of the detail about how to do it. Again, it's not your traditional, okay, these are the ingredients, and you pour this, and they're, they're not being that detailed, but they're giving you some good information about how they're preparing and what goes into the, the food dishes that they're sharing. So notice that they started with an introduction. They started, then they talked about the cultural aspect, and now they're kind of getting into the details of the particular dishes that they're sharing with you visually and also through conversation. Now, some things here that we can take away from this example, like at the end, at some point, I think it's important to include the members of the team that created the video. Now, that this can be in the form of, a, it would be nice to see a, a picture of all of you guys, but um, at least have textually list of, of uh, the team members and maybe just a brief inclusion of who did what, right? Who, who was responsible for creating the different parts of the video? Now, in this case, of course, the, vid the video showing an image of uh, the people in the video, right? That's, which is a little bit different. But notice they have uh, text here to conclude the video, right? And yeah, I think there's some, a lot of good examples here that we can take away for our own purposes. Now, this is a professionally uh, designed video. Um, in our case, you can also include, and in, where they're showing video, you can show images. That's, that's fine too. You can show kind of a, like a slideshow of images as you are speaking and presenting uh, your information. Right? So these are some ideas here to think about. Again, these are not, I don't want you to do exactly like what they're doing here, but I think we can get some good ideas about how to prepare our own video. Let's take just a, a few more minutes here to look at Another example. Now, right away, Southern food traditions. Now we've jumped uh, to another culture from the United States. Right? You'll notice right away also that the clothes the person's wearing is representative of the culture that they're going to talk about. Right? And they're showing how to... Now, this is interesting what they talk about here. In fact, I wasn't that aware of it. But in the United States, it's very customary to associate chicken, specifically fried chicken, with African-American culture. And it's interesting what he says here about this, uh, this idea. So this is interesting. He's basically telling a story of, of how the African Americans, how the slaves, they were not able to have uh, horses. They couldn't have cattle. They couldn't own anything, of course. But they, they were in charge of, of the chickens. And so a lot of, a lot of that, the, the association with chickens and African Americans goes back to this idea of slavery during that time period where they were responsible and uh, really took care of the, the chickens and the, and, the, and the food in terms of preparing dishes uh, with that type of meat. This is very, very interesting and see how they link that historical anecdote, that information in their own, uh, in their video here. It represents empowerment. Our story is told through our plates. So think about the, this idea of stories are told through our plates. That might be kind of an under, uh, underpinning or a theme of what to think about when you're creating your own, your own video. How do you link identity, culture, a celebrity, fashion, and food together. How do you link, how do you make that link throughout your video? 
So again, as, noted, this is another good example of looking at the artifacts and the objects, the materials that were used in preparing the food. Not just how, not just the process of making the food, but the materials involved in making the food. And again, it doesn't have to be super, uh, you know, sophisticated. Your video here, you can simply find images of certain materials and talk about those materials or processes that really relate to the preparation of the food that you're talking about. Of course, you can talk about ingredients, right? We haven't seen some examples here, but you can talk about very um, specific ingredients that may might be uh, might have some cultural relevance. You can talk about those in in your video, right? You can use images where we're seeing a lot of examples of moving images, like video. But you can also use images instead of uh, a video. You don't need to have music in the background, okay? And I, I really, if if of all the examples here, I would, you know, I wouldn't worry about having music in the background because a lot of times it's difficult to set the 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 right volume so it doesn't interfere with what you're saying, right? So don't feel like you need to have music in the background. Most of the time we run into problems anyway with uh, licensing. And, you know, I would suggest that you try to create as much of this video as you can. If you're going to include a video within your video, make the video yourself. And it, it doesn't have to be fancy. It just, I would rather see you create your own images and your own video in your own text, your own conversation, in this, uh, in this, uh, in this video, if you're going to use images, okay, and you guys can go back and watch this. I, I think we've got the the main ideas from these two videos, but but take a look at these two again. If if you find this helpful, of course, there are many other examples online. But if you're going to use images, if you're going to use anything online, I suggest that you use images under what's called the Creative Commons license, which we've talked a little bit about before. If you're using DuckDuckGo, which I suggest everyone using as a search engine, I would type in exclamation mark CC. This is for Creative Commons. And type in your search term, you know, whatever term it is, food or um, culture, or maybe even the person that you're focusing on. But notice here with this type of search, it takes me right to the Creative Commons search. And this is basically a filter where you can choose. I, I think any of these licenses are fine. Okay, I'm not going to go into uh, the details of the differences between these, but any Creative Commons license, I think will be fine for our purpose. But notice here under food, and I can change this as I wish, you can search by image, audio, and video. And so this is like a filter that will allow you to find images that you can use in your own video production. Okay, so anything that is not, that you don't create. And again, I, I suggest that you try to create as much as you can in terms of images and videos that you're going to be sharing. But if you really need to find something that you can't create yourself, I would suggest using Creative Commons, using this Creative Commons search page. Right? If you want to find the website, it's search.creativecommons.org. Or if you're using DuckDuckGo, just exclamation mark CC, and this will take you to this page. All right? So... This, uh, this is what I wanted to share with you guys, this, these videos to give you some ideas. Now let's look at, let's go into the Word document that we worked on yesterday. I want to talk about organization. We go into performance tasks, unit two. Let's open up. A good performance, the Word document. This is, again, the, the document that we looked at yesterday.
And let's scroll towards the bottom of the document. If you haven't already, please make the changes to our list of what a great performance includes. I would suggest that you remove my comments after you've made the changes, right? So that we can remove all these comments as we go. All right, let's go all the way down towards the bottom. And I've added here a section of organization. Now, what can we think about? How can we organize our video? And I want to give you some suggestions because, again, I want this to be a team decision on how you decide to organize your own video. I want you guys to decide. Now, if you need help and you want, uh, you know, if you need more assistance from me, then that's fine. But I want to start with giving you basically an option to choose however you want to organize your ideas. Now, let's look at one way that you can organize your your video. And I'm going to present a couple of examples here, and then I will allow you guys to add additional ways that you can organize your pattern. But I'm going to ask that you include that down here at the bottom. So let's look at the first way here. The organizing, how can you organize your pattern? All right? You could begin, and I'm, I'm going to talk about this generally, not, not super specifically, but here you could have one member write out, or not write out, one member explaining the recipe while the other members hard to talk and type at the same time but you could say this one member is explaining so imagine one member explaining the recipe throughout the video and the other members throwing kind of inserting their topics throughout the discussion of the recipe if that makes sense right so again one person is the the whole recipe is going to last the entire um, length of the video but uh, one person might throw in some anecdotes about the celebrity that uh, they chose, or another person might talk about a fashion aspect or a cultural aspect, but it, it is inserted in the appropriate moments as one person is explaining the recipe. So fashion, uh, all right? So this is one way that you could organize it. Now, notice I'm not getting into the specifics about exactly how you would organize the recipe but here the organizational pattern is more or less how members team members can present their information okay that's one way another way is to uh, discuss the one member discusses the recipe then one member discuss discusses culture and one member discusses a famous person or a celebrity <clears throat> all right so this would be more like okay <clears throat> one person speaks you know, for <clears throat> five minutes or so, then a second person speaks, and then the third person speaks. Okay, but again, everything is connected and tied together. All right, this is another way that you could could present your ideas. All right. Now there are many other ways to do this, but this is something I want you guys to discuss as uh, with your team, and. There's nothing that says that you have to start with the recipe first and start with the famous person. But remember that this is a cooking, like a cooking show. I mean, the focus is 
on the cooking, but the recipe could come at the very end. It could be, it could build and move from the general, the cultural aspects, the fashion, the famous person, and then conclude with the recipe at the end. That's another way of doing it. But with this document here, what I'd like is a general uh, way of interacting that shows some sort of organizational pattern. But again, this is general. When you've decided on one of these patterns, and again, you guys can add, if you don't like this, if the pattern that you guys want to do for your own team or with your own team doesn't uh, align with one of these two, you can add your pattern down here. So notice I have a, a description of the pattern, very basic, just one sentence is enough. And then I'm going to ask you guys to include your team number under the organizational pattern that you chose. Again, if you don't identify with these first two, add your example. And you, we can add as many organizational patterns as we need. If we need 13 different organizational patterns, if they exist, uh, we can do that. right? But I want to be able to see... Generally speaking, the organizational pattern that your team decides on, okay? And I would like that you add, one of your team members, add this information here. Once you've completed this as a team with your teammates, I want you to begin creating an outline. Now, in your outline, this is where in your groups, you can go to in Microsoft Teams, in your appropriate group, Select files and make sure that all of us now we should have a week eight folder where we're putting all of the documents that we're working on this week in that folder. But in your week eight folder, you'll you can create a Word document. And the Word document, I would title it outline for you know performance test number two, and include the outline. And this is going to be now in greater detail how you want to organize your ideas. And you can also indicate who is going to do what and when. And try to include as much detail as possible in the outline. When you guys are ready to create your video, which is not going to be today and it probably should not be t tomorrow, I want to give you guys some time to really work together and think about how you want to organize this video. But I want to have a conversation with each of your teams before you create your video. I'd like to be able to meet with you online to look at your outline, to look at your organizational pattern, to hear you explain how you want to present your video. Right, to give you some, if need be, to give you some feedback, or if nothing else, to say, hey, that sounds like a great idea, go for it. All right, to give you some, if you need some ideas, even before that, of course, we can address those. But I really want to have a conversation with each team member before you create your video. We want to create the best video that we possibly can. And the best way to do that is not to jump to it without thinking oh i just we got to finish this video we got to do it really quickly i really want us to put a lot of thought into how we organize not only our ideas but our images how are we organizing our message throughout our 15 to tw uh, 20 minute video again each member should totally uh, in total speak about five minutes but that doesn't mean that you have to speak all of your five minutes, into it, you know, one at a time. You can, it can be interspersed, it can be back and forth, because again, this should be conversational. We don't want to write out anything. As much as we're trying to prepare for a good video, I don't want us to write out a script. I don't want us to be reading specific, I don't want us to be reading anything, right? Everything that you, any information you're sharing, you can read online, you can listen to videos, you can get information that you want to include. But just like our podcast, right? When you're listening to information, we don't want to be reading anything when we're sharing our own 
message and our own perspective, our own ideas that relate to uh, the topic that we're discussing. All right, so in summary, if you need to, take a look at the video examples that we saw today or some additional videos if you want to get further ideas about what you can include in your own video. Go to the Word document that I just shared with you here to add your team to the organizational pattern. And again, you can meet with your uh, teammates first and discuss this and, and work in the document collectively if you want. And then once you've chosen the uh, organizational pattern, right, then go into and create your own Word document for your own team under week eight folder to create now a, an outline and start discussing and use that document as a collection of ideas to show the order in which you're going to present not only your ideas, but also anything else that relates to images or, you know, you could even include links to certain images if you're going to find uh, images under a Creative Commons license, right? You could use that document to kind of point to different aspects if you need to, to help to organize your ideas. All right. Any questions, my friends, about what we're going to do? We're going to work the rest of the class on this activity until 940. Any questions? No, did you? All right, I'm going to go ahead and mute my mic. Of course, I'll be online. If you guys have questions, just jump right in with your microphone or send a, a message. I'll be checking my chat in Microsoft Teams. And we will reconvene at 940. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, guys, it's 940. I think we'll go ahead and uh, conclude today's class. We started off this morning uh, talking about your speaking activity that you completed last Friday. We're going to have another opportunity this Friday to do a very similar speaking activity. I'll give you a question, and you'll have one minute to respond. The scores that I'm sharing with you on my screen these are the, the best scores that you can receive based on how long you spoke during last week's activity. So this uh, will give you an idea. Let me scroll down here. Take a look at the score that you would have received um, if, uh, if you were to receive a grade from last week. All right. Again, in this example, I'm giving full credit for the delivery and language use, but of course, not everyone would have received full credit. This is just to give you an idea of the importance of trying to prepare and speak for one minute when you respond. When you guys filled out your self-evaluation, there were three questions about note-taking. My suggestion to you is to reflect on whether or not you took notes and how you took notes to see if that will help you speak longer if you need to. Even if you spoke for one minute, taking notes I think is a good idea to organize your response in order to uh, have the best delivery as possible. How can you organize your ideas in your uh, during your response? All right, so here are your theoretical scores. Uh, we'll have another activity this Friday. And uh, when we conclude the activity, then I'll give you the rest of time on Friday to complete the performance task. As I mentioned this morning, I'm going to extend the due date for the performance task until Saturday if you need it. If you can finish on Friday, great. Finish on Friday. But if you need an extra day, then feel free to uh, get together with your team on Saturday to complete the second performance task, the performance task for Unit 2. Um, we talked about today uh, organization, right? So today, try to complete the the organization pattern that is most appropriate for your performance. If you go into performance tasks, unit two, 
a good performance towards the bottom of the document I provided two general examples of ways that you can present or organize your cooking show so if you haven't already please indicate or put your team number under the organizational pattern that you feel is most appropriate. Again, this is a team decision. So everyone should have a voice. Everyone should have a, an opinion. But you need to reach a decision as to which of the organizational patterns are going to be the most appropriate. If you don't like organizational pattern number one or organizational pattern number two, and you think that there is another organizational pattern that is more appropriate, then add the description after the organizational pattern number three and add your name below. But you, you need to have a description of what kind of pattern it is. And again, I don't mind if we have 13 different ways of organizing the video. Okay, the main thing is that I would like to see the general organizational pattern here for your, uh, for your cooking show. Again, the key idea here is to keep it general, but think in terms of how you're going to deliver the content, who's going to speak, what to topics are going to be covered first, and how are you going to make it as conversational as possible. So in this case, I see Team 5, it looks like. They've indicated here pattern number three, but you need to first add the description. What kind of pattern is it if it does not fall under any of these first two patterns? Okay, actually I see team five under the first pattern. So just decide, again, you don't have to choose these two. I'm only providing these as examples, uh, as ways that you could present or organize your, your video. All right, but again, you have a choice if you have an alternative way of doing it because there are many, many ways that you can organize your ideas. Just add your, um, add your pattern here below. Finally, we worked in teams and I'm asking everyone to begin an outline, create a Word document under week eight. Try to create a folder for week eight and within that folder, titled week eight, create a Word document where you can begin drafting an outline. Now the outline is going to be specifically how you're going to organize your ideas. Now this is gonna include the topics, who's gonna say what and when. You might even have notes within the, the document or comments that relate to the images or videos or titles that you're gonna include. Uh, but I want more detail in the outline, and this outline will be what we talk about, what I will refer to when your team and I speak and talk about your video before you actually produce your video. Again, I would like to meet with each team before you create your final video. Uh, if you want to practice and work it out beforehand, before we discuss it, that's fine. But again, I would like to offer uh, feedback to the team before you, you create your final video. The whole idea with spending this amount of time on organization and working together on coming up with an outline is so that when you go to create your video, you create the best video that you possibly can. That's, that's the whole point. I don't want you to jump into creating the video. This is why I want to give you an extra day on Saturday if you need it to complete the video instead of maybe trying to do it on Thursday if you can't do it on Friday. I would much rather you uh, spend that time working and talking with your group, with your team, to make the best decisions in terms of what you want to produce, what you want to include in the video, and how you want to deliver that uh, the, the video. How do you want to deliver the content? Finally, I'd like to invite everyone on October 22nd. I included an invitation in Microsoft Teams. Let me open that up here. Yesterday I posted here an invitation to a talk that uh, uh, Dr. Luis Humberto and I are going to give online. This is a research project that we 
did. Uh, we've been working on it for a couple of years now. We're, we're finishing the project, and uh, we're going to share our findings, our results of our study. And it also includes one of the groups uh, from our BA, right? So these are students, uh, a specific group of students in our BA that participated in our study, and we want to share our findings related to writing and uh, giving feedback. So if you're interested, um, feel free to join. This is open to the public, and I'm sharing the link here. If you're interested in doing research and uh, know that you're um, that you'll that you want to get involved in to research later on, then you might uh, find this interesting. All right. So this is an invitation for everyone if you'd like to attend. And that's all I have. Are there any questions, guys, about what we did today, your project that you're working on with your team, or anything else that we've talked about today? Nope. Uh, no, this is a question. Yes, go ahead. Uh, uh, we have to do like five minutes per, per uh, teammate, or just five the whole team? No, it's uh, five minutes per teammate. So if you have three members that are participating in your team, then you'll, your final video will be about 15 minutes. If you have four members and you're all participating, then it will be about 20 minutes. Okay. And uh, if we uh, record the video here in Microsoft Teams, how we can upload it, upload it in Sway or... Uh, no. It's not necessary to upload it in Sway. Um, I will ask that you upload the video as you've done in the past in the folder, in this case, week eight folder. Uh, we just, uh, we can do it like the other uh, project? Just yes. Mm -hmm. and, and, yes. Ah, okay, okay, yes. okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. Now, you that's not the only way, but yes, you certainly can do do it the same way you've done it in the past. If you're using a different software and doing it a different way, that's fine. But I would ask that you upload the video to uh, the week eight folder. Just be careful with the size of the the files. Okay, so if you're dealing with one or two gigabyte files, I I would check to see if there's a way to produce a file that's not so big. Because otherwise, depending on how fast your internet is, it could take days, days and days to upload. So just keep all that in mind when you're making decisions about which video software to use. And, you know, I want I don't want to make this more complicated or more difficult for you than it has to be. So make sure, though, you're planning ahead and you're aware of how big the files are. Just do a test, do a creative video, a five minute video and and uh, publish it and see how big the file is so that you can you have an idea beforehand you know what you're getting yourself into all right guys we'll stop there for today i uh, hope you guys have a good day and we'll see you tomorrow take care everybody thank you teacher thank you teacher. Bye. Bye. thank you teacher bye thank you teacher bye bye